64 watts, 74 watts power pull from the socket, 12,847. That's ridiculous. In this box, there is a PC, quite a powerful PC. This is the full box of the PC. Then what size is the actual PC inside? It has eight cores and 16 threads, and it's a Ryzen 9. So uh, let's find out how good this PC is. Looking for a cheap way to license your Windows? Check out WhoKeys through the links in the video description. Make sure to use the code TN20 to get a 30% off. Paste the license to the activation settings and you're all done. This license is for Windows 10, but you can upgrade it to Windows 11 for free. They also offer Microsoft Office 19 license. Use the same code TN20 to get a 30% off. Check out whokeys.com in the video description below. So I don't know if you know about these mini PCs before, but there is a few companies who do them. This one over here is more fine. And this is the S500 Plus mini PC. And if you look on the side over here, there's a few options it can come with. 5300U, 5500U, 5700U and 5900H. X and this one over here is 5900HX. So I'm very curious to see like how small and how powerful this actually is. <laughs> Look at the size of this. That's very nice. We've got some instruction manuals, quick start guides. Okay, and what's underneath here? Okay, we have the power brick for this. Let's have a look. What's the wattage over here? 9 volts and 6.32 amperes. So what, about 120 watts, something like that. We have some kind of plastic sheet that looks exactly like the holes SATA SSD. So I'm not quite sure what this is for. We get something like that. We have something like that. I think this is like a mount for the visa mount if you want to mount it behind the monitor this is hdmi to hdmi cable okay this is the quick start guide and these are the warnings but there's no instructions how to actually open this up and how to get this to work because what i have over here is bare bones version there's also like versions that come with certain things already uh, like applied like the ram and ssd and so on oh yeah maybe that's how you're supposed to put it that makes sense okay i managed to somehow peel it off okay you can see that the wi-fi antennas go on the top of the case there's a wi-fi card here this is where the ram goes if we can install this ram in there this is 16 gigabytes of uh, HyperX, Kingston HyperX. Well, actually now it's HP, but it's so old that it used to be Kingston. So we're just gonna push this in. There we go. Ah, as you can see, look, you're gonna mount it on the side here. On the lid, there's holes on the side, and then you can put the SSD in there, just like that. This goes in there. Actually, it probably has to go this way. As you can see, this goes that way and then the power goes in there. So that's like how your SATA will be connected. There is an M.2 slot in here. And as you can see, it's already pre-applied here, this screw. So we can just take this screw off. Let's put our M.2 in. We have Kingston FireCuda 530 PCIe Gen 4 SSD. So this is absolute overkill for this, but this is the only spare one I have right now to show you this. I don't think this is even Gen 4 speeds of the SSD just because actually maybe it is it should be is it gen 4 I don't know we'll find out so these two are plugged in we could have a look at actually on the other side of the motherboard as well where the cooling is with these four screws we should be able to take this out i'm not so interested in looking at the cooling i'm more interested in knowing how well does the cooling work so let's see if we can plug this back in now there we go i have to use a little bit of force to do that okay once they're in there we'll take these two screws and put them back on the side let's try to install windows on this and then turn this pc on and let's see some of the benchmarks and let's have a look inside the pc then Okay, so I have set this mini PC up and the more I spend time with it, the more impressive it gets. I am very, very impressed and I'm just 
so excited that something so small can be so good. Now, I knew about these mini PCs before, but I didn't know they can be that powerful. So let's talk about how powerful is this little guy. Like, it's so small, you can literally put it almost in your pocket. If you've got a hoodie, you can just put it in there. It's just insane. Now, it's pretty much the same size as, as Mac Mini, but even the Mac Studio next to it looks absolutely massive. And obviously, this is completely different price range than this one. I'm gonna leave the links for this in the description below if you wanna check out this more fine uh, one. There's different models in there, it depends, but this is like one of the more expensive ones. But compared to this one over here, it's not that bad. Like this, I think is about 600, 700 pounds, something like that. I did a few essential benchmarks on this just to kind of see how good this is. This is a Ryzen 9 5900HX and Radeon graphics. The multi-core score is 11,443 and the CPU single core is 1,463. And you're thinking, well, yeah, but where does that kind of line up? Now, that is literally Ryzen 5600X or Intel 11600K territory. Now, if you think you can have Ryzen 5600X in this type of form factor, that's insane. So if you want to do a little bit of like photo editing, Photoshop or Lightroom or something like that, this is like an ideal PC for that. You just mount that with this thing on the back of a monitor or on the back of a TV in your living room, get some kind of wireless keyboard and a mouse, sit down, edit your photos. It's going to be super fast. It's going to work perfectly fine just because you don't need that much graphics for it. Like having a dedicated graphics card doesn't make a difference on Photoshop or Lightroom. I also did Geekbench 5 if you want to compare it with like your PC or what you're running. Then single core is 1,507 and multi core 7,765. But even the single core performance is like just right up there with like Ryzen 5000 series processors. Maybe Ryzen 9 5950X is like 1600, but that's not that much better. It's like maybe a few percent better, but it's just super, super exciting to have this. Now you can't expand the storage on a lot of the devices, but to have something so small, but still be able to expand it is fantastic. Now I've got two things installed here. The main drive was the FICUDA 530 that you saw me install. That's here C drive and the D drive is the SATA SSD that's inside there. But interestingly, the NVMe slot, if you want to, you can get like a converter that will convert this to like a PCI slot and you can have external graphics card run on that X4 slot on the M.2. Now for creators, it doesn't make a lot of sense. It's a little bit of a useless feature just because the M.2 here is actually bottlenecked well, not bottleneck, but configured to PCIe Gen 3. And this is where the actual benchmarks of the SSDs come in here. As you can see, the C drive is capped at 3.7 gigabytes per second, which is basically a half of the speed that the drive is capable of doing. It's rated to 7.3 gigabytes per second, the FICU to 530. But as you can see here, we're gapped by that. But if you want to be on a budget, I'd highly recommend something like this, the Sabre Rocket 3.0 drive. 256 gigabytes or something like that. It's gonna be super snappy, enough to drive the OS and your programs and everything else, and then put all the rest on the SATA SSD. And as you can see, the other SATA pod here, our Kingston drive, is running super fast as well, you know, for a SATA speeds. So on the back over here, we can see two LAN pods. One of them is one gigabit pod, and one of them is 2.5 gigabit pod. So if you wanna connect this to your NAS, that runs 2.5G, it's absolutely capable of doing it. Or if you wanna have this render some of the videos online and use this as a virtual machine or something like that, it can do that and it's just very good option there to do that. This here is headphone and line input as well. Two video outputs, one HDMI and one display pod. Then four USB type A and USB 2.0 speeds here for your keyboards and mice and whatever accessories you want to connect to it. And then in the front, you can see we have type C and then two type A ports, and they're all 10 gigabits in speed. Obviously it's theoretical 10 gigabit speeds. I'm not actually seeing that. I was kind of browsing around in the BIOS of this, and then I found that there is a position boost overdrive for something like this, which I was like, this is insane if we can get that. So let's have a look at how does this work and how do the temps work. So we're running 87, high 80s, close to 90s, CPU package here, about 40 watts we're pulling here. And I can see the overall system drawer is about 65 watts, 92, 94, 96, 97, 
Yikes, that is very, very hot here. 97C. But interestingly, like when I'm feeling the air coming out, it's not coming out super hot. So it makes me wonder how good is the thermal paste application on the CPU. Maybe this can be improved. But now I want to go to the BIOS to actually turn on Precision Boost Overdrive just for the crack of it to see what's going to happen. Is it actually going to start pushing more power through there or not? Well, let's find out. So let's hit delete here. And then here we are. So we go to advanced and then we go in the overclocking. There we go. Accept. Precision boost overdrive. I bet I could actually undervolt it as well if you want to, you know, overclock or underclock your CPU. Precision boost overdrive. Let's just enable this. Let's see what, what's going to happen, okay? Idling temperature is very, very high. Look at that. We're only pulling, what, what are we? Five watts here. 7 watts, but we're only 60, 59C. I'm going to press start. Let's see if it pulls more than 40 watts from, from here or not. 45 watts. There, look, extra flipping 10 watts. We're still not thermal throttling, but precision boost overdrive actually works. It's hot. It's very, very hot. But I wonder if our score is going to improve. Actually, not that great of a score. I just want to see the actual core clock speeds. At first, 3.6 gigahertz, as you can see. Let's keep an eye on this. 3.5, it's clocking itself time. 3.497, 3.45, 3.44. Look, the clock speeds are going down. 3.43, 3.42, 3.4. Okay, boost up about 3.4, somewhere around there. But literally running 100C. And we're pulling 48 watts from the socket. 3.37, 3.38, 3.36. That's like going close to the actual base speed of our boost. Because as you can see, the boost is 4.6 gigahertz here. But our multicore at the moment is 3.36 gigahertz. The score is a little bit better this time. But what I want to find out is if there is actually some thermal paste and if we can improve that. What good news! Look at that! We have another PCI slot over there. We actually have two Ender 2 slots in here as well. How did I miss that? That's absolutely amazing. So it's going to suck the air in from the bottom of the PC there and then push it out from the side over here. There is a QC over here. So I'm going to take this off. We're going to lose our warranty. So what? And interestingly, look, the CPU fan is actually connected through a normal PWM connector here. And I'm just gonna pull this back like this because I don't wanna take this all out because there's a connection in between just so that the airflow isn't like going coming up from the side or something like that, but it can actually go through. Whoa, that was very loose here. That screw was very loose. I wonder if we were getting actually good contact. So let's have a look, pull this off, yeah. I mean, the thermal paste application looks not too bad. So we're going to clean this up and I'm going to actually add MX5 there, right? So this is a little bit more sticky. So we'll see if that is any better. Maybe we can get the pressure a little bit better over there. watts 74 watts now pulled from the socket that's insane look it's still boosting 3.9 gigahertz 
So actually our CPU thermal application now is better because look, it thinks it can do better job at boosting there. So let's have a look at our score now when this is done. So this is now literally like Ryzen 5600X kind of territory, how much we're pulling out. 3.8 gigahertz still, we're definitely gonna get higher score now. 3.7 gigahertz here, 12,847. That's ridiculous. Let me see what territory is this now. So our thermal paste application actually did improve now because I put a new paste there. So I used MX5 from Arctic, which is a little bit more like, like chewing gum. So it's not as like liquidy and I really well like pasted around so that it's all over the die, which means that it just absorbs the heat a little bit better. Now, the overall kind of boost is still like 103 degrees, but I'm just looking at Cinebench R23. Wow, that is amazing. That is better than the i5 12400 and 12500. It's ridiculous. Now this is better than the Apple M1 Max. Apple M1 Max, according to Dave 2D, is 12,380. Look at that, 12,847. That's absolutely ridiculous. If you're gonna get it, just see your temperatures, see your scores. You might be able to squeeze a little bit more power out from there. Just because now enabling the position boost overdrive, we're actually pulling from 40 watts to 74 watts. So almost doubling the actual power, what we're pulling through there. Now I wish that the VRMs had some kind of heatsink here as well, but I guess it's not nothing like that powerful that we're gonna pull through, but that's very, very interesting. I'm gonna leave the thermal paste in the description below as well, if you wanna pick it up. It's not expensive at all, just a few quid, and you should be getting like this little spreading tool as well. Another thing I wanna find out now is if that secondary M.2 slot is PCIe Gen 4 or Gen 3. Still 3.7, so nothing changed there. So both of the M.2 slots are Gen 3 speeds. Overall, I'm super impressed with this mini PC just because it packs so much power and you as a creator might be interested in this just because it opens up a whole new world what you can do with this where you can put this and how creative you can be maybe you need something on the set just on the monitor to play back some ridiculous footage or you want something in a very compact form factor next to a tv you don't want to bring big towers this can do some amazing things even as a creator you can upgrade this ram to 64 gigabytes i highly recommend like kingston fury impact i've used that for my nook this is absolutely amazing you have three ssd storage options two m the twos one sata that's ridiculous Everything so small form factor, so compact, but yet so, so powerful. And the fan speeds can be a little bit loud when you're like really pushing the CPU because it's so small, but it's kind of like a laptop, you know, fan. If you get like an MSI or Asus or some kind of gigabyte laptop that has similar type of thermals, then it's gonna make similar kind of noise. But I'm super impressed. If you wanna check it out, I'm gonna leave the link in the description below. This is the S500 Plus Mini PC. So let me know what you think in the comment section below. Thanks guys for watching. Likes if you enjoyed it. Subs if you'd like to see more and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.